step, now that we have the gates all generated and we know the chip is going to be testable because we put some extra gates in there, we need to make sure those gates are going to work. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this before, but it's very, very important to t check all along the way. Is it working? Is it connected right? Is it working? Is, you know, do, is my idea even right? Did I forget something about my cell phone ringer? So this is the step called verification, where we verify that all these logic gates are going to do what I want them to do and when I want them to do it. So I don't want my cell phone ringer to ring five minutes after the call comes in and the line's available. The timing of it has to be exactly right on. So again, EDA tools, absolutely imperative. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to check it by hand on a piece of paper. Forget it. So we call these steps simulation. So you can think of simulation, you, you probably have heard of a flight simulator, you know, where you're pretending to fly an airplane when you're learning to be a pilot. Maybe you've had the opportunity, like I have, to actually be in one of those flight simulators where they, uh, I can't remember what the name of the little place was, but it's pure entertainment. It's really awesome where you're simulating, you know, flying a jet plane. Um, simulation is very important. That, that part I just mentioned about you've got to get the timing just right, that step is called timing analysis. Make sure that that cell phone ringer is going to ring when you want it to, not too soon, not too late. Um, so that's a very, very important part. And then test bins generation is where you're actually going to generate Hmm, what kind of test should I do? Um, should I put electricity here and turn this switch on? Should I put it over there and turn this one off? And that's all done automatically as well. And here's some example products. So this is, this, isn't this great? That's, that's my animation for you. Those are my animation skills. So, uh, clearly, I'm not good at animation. <laughs> I'm good at other things. I'm an engineer, but animation is not one of my skills. But so what you do when you're doing this verification is you put all those ones and zeros, which means turn the switches on and off, on and off, on and off, all the way through, and make sure that you get what you expect on the other side. The reports that come out of, our, of these tools, the EDA tools, are phenomenal. They're all types of analysis and different diagrams and a, a whole bunch of diagnostics that will tell you, is your chip actually working? Are those gates working the way you want them to? And you have lots of opportunity at this point to go back and correct things. You can go back and say, no, you know, I don't want my cell phone ringer to ring. I want it to buzz because it's on vibrate mode. So lots of, of iteration in these in this design flow back and forth back and forth as you're checking things fixing things checking things fixing things and again all of these diagnostic reports are what guide you to make sure your chip is working I want to show you something. This is a little bit more of an advanced verification technology, but still it's pretty cool and it gives you an idea of how we in the EDA industry are progressing our technology to make sure those chips work and then, of course, get cheaper so you can have really cool products. So this is um, something that we call assertion-based verification. That's pretty cool. I guess you could use that along with photolithography. Yeah, that's, that's the second step. Next, the, the, the next week when you walk through the engineering ranks, say assertion-based verification and see what happens. Um, um, so what it, what it is is this. Let me show you diagra diagrammatically. So let's say this is a little switch on the top, and when the line goes up, that means it turns on. So the top little switch turns on, and then the bottom one, I want it to turn on right in there. So this is timing, which is really important. So the first little switch turns on, and then I happen to know that a few nanoseconds later, I want the other one to turn on. That's my intended behavior. So I write this into my specification so that the computer programs that are automating the design are going to know that's what I want. And so I used to write it like this. This is actual uh, Verilog system, Verilog code. And so you can see command after command is saying to the computer, this is what I want my chip to do. And that works pretty well, but that's a lot of code. So the engineers, the EDA engineers, invented something that they call assertions. And they said, I know something about this, and I'm going to assert that this is the behavior I want. And they condensed that language down into a single line, which is really cool on, on lots of fronts. What it means is that I don't have to write so much code. I don't have to think in terms of, oh, this, then this, then this, then this. I can just say, this is what I want. I assert this is what I want. 
Um, it also then means there might be fewer mistakes that I make when I'm writing all of this code. And the fewer mistakes, then I don't have to debug it later. So it's very compact. It's very, very powerful. And it's a really neat way that we've made verification a little bit easier and a little easier on the engineer and more cost effective and time effective for the people that are doing the chip design. So that's just one small example of the neat uh, steps forward that we take in EDA as we keep progressing. The next step then is to make sure that we create a good test program. Um, and I've talked about test in, in this video segment. But this is again for the manufacturer to throw out the defective chips. Now imagine, okay, here's my chip from before. Imagine that I got the billion transistors in there and I want to turn every single one on and off because I want to make sure they're all working. I'm going to have to put electricity on each little pin and send it all through and measure it on each other little pin. And I'm going to have to do this in order to make every single possible combination of switches on and off um, work on the tester. And the amount of testing that that would take is just mind-boggling. Uh, human beings could not do that if it weren't for automation. So uh, we use, again, an EDA tool called Automatic Test Program Generation. Thank goodness it does it for you. And it's going to figure out all those combinations. Uh, good example of a product there. So let me again kind of describe how this works. Here's my chip. Those are the gates, of course. And these are the little pins that you know, are on the chip. So what I do is I'm going to apply, the, the testing machine is going to apply electricity. And it's going to turn the switches on and off, on and off, on and off. And certain amounts of electricity are going to come out. And the tester is going to measure what that electricity is on all those different pins. But the test program is going to say, here's what I expect to happen when the electricity goes through this chip. And the testing machine is going to check then, what did I get versus what did I expect? And if these match, ooh, I got the electricity out. It's exactly what I expected to happen. Then I know that's a good chip. And if they don't match, then the chip is defective and I throw it out. So the electricity goes through. I don't know if you could see that on the video, but years ago, we paid a guy like $1,000 to do that animation. <laughs> so I kept it in just because I paid a lot of money for it. So it's cool. But that's anyway the concept of the whole test program generation and how the uh, test machine checks for defective chips. Now, it's really important that we have a fast chip and a small chip and one that doesn't use less power. So let's say I have this massive chip and it's totally amazing, but it's really, really slow. So switches are turning on and off and they're taking too long and it's just the thing is so slow that, you know, if, if you're a tablet and you're trying to read something, it just don't, won't work. So we're going to have to fix the speed. We also have this massive thing and oh darn, it is so big it won't fit on one wafer. Well, we need to make it pretty small. So we're going to have to tweak that design a little bit more to get it smaller. and. In today's world, it's got to use less power. We can't be charging you know, cell phones every 10 minutes just because the battery goes dead. So we absolutely want to make sure that it uses less power. This whole step in the design process we call optimization. And this is where tools are very, very important to help us to analyze this great big mass of stuff, how to make it more condensed and faster and use less power. Uh, there's some examples of some tools that we offer that do the optimization. So let me show you an example of how this would work. Let's say that this is my big computer chip. And if you notice, here's some gates in this part of the chip. Here's some gates. They look exactly the same. Well, what if for some reason when I designed this, I ended up with these guys working half the time while these guys sit around, and these guys start working while these guys are sitting around? You know, if I could get rid of those guys completely, then my chip now gets smaller because this guy's working the whole time. It uses less power because I don't have to power all these guys. And it becomes smaller, smaller, faster, and using less power, all by being able to analyze and say, what kinds of things can I make do double duty work? So that's what optimization is about. And it's, it's an extremely important part of the overall design flow. Once you've done this, however, you've changed the design. So what if by accident, I mean, EDA tools never do anything wrong. They're always perfect. 
Um, but what if by chance something goes wrong? You really want to check one more time because your design has changed. You want to make sure that it's exactly the same function, exactly the same timing as you used to have. And this step is interesting. We call it formal verification because it uses these amazing mathematical proofs to say, hmm, I'm looking at this design, looking at the other one, and you know what? They are the same. And uh, uh, very, very advanced kind of stuff, but a very important step in the design process. And our tool is called Formality, which is kind of a nice name.